الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أيها بالليف في الله as you should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, grant us the great gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, addressing one of the great matter of the deen. Qala, ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim إن أولى الناس بإبراهيم للذين اتبعوه وهذا النبي والذين آمنوا والله ولي المؤمنين. Among the people, the best to claim Ibrahim عليه السلام, to be follower of Ibrahim, to be close to Ibrahim, to be you know in relation in kin with Ibrahim عليه السلام, are those who followed him in his life. This Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers. Wallahu waliyul mu'mineen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector, the guardians of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this ayah because some of the people of the book they claim that Ibrahim alayhi salam was following their path. And they were claiming such a thing to show their superiority to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they show that they are the people of true faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them with this ayah. And before that, قَالَ مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا Ibrahim alayhi salam came before Musa and before Isa. So he was not Jew or Christian. Ibrahim was Hanif and Muslima. He was the one who... Submitted his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally, fully, completely deviated from the wrong path and to be firmly on the right path. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined for us one of the great matter to understand what is the center of the deen, what is the core of the deen. And we say the deen is the religion, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask yourself what is the core and the center, where I should stand to look around me and to start my path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to review your deen today, if you want to say, I need to take a strong position uh, toward my, my, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I need to find my path. I need to review it. I want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which position from where you want to start? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by ending saying, Allahu waliyul mu'mineen, Allah, the, great, the, the protector and the guardian of the believer. This alliance that you ally yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the center. That is the center. That's where you're from. That's where you start from. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying that, you understand that to be in relation with Allah, to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be your protector, to be from awliya Allah, and to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your wali, your protector, you believe in it, you acknowledge it, you strive to implement it in your life, that's indeed bring you nasr, bring you ta'eed, bring you the fadl, bring you the rahmah, and this is what we call al-izzatu and al-karamatu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he say, Allahu waliyu al this is the greatest news for the believer. Because when Allah is your protector and his guardian, your guardian, you have the pride, you have the honor, you have the dignity, all of it completely, because in al izzatu lillahi jamiha. Then you have the support, you have the help, and you have the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be cherishing you, defending you, and subhanahu wa ta'ala will be showering you with his mercy. Then Allah waliyul mu'mineen, 
fadlun wa rahmatun min Allah as a bounty of Allah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the heart and the core of the deen. So when you start, you have to position yourself. You cannot position yourself in any place and say, I'm going to start to act in the deen. Or you have a group that you get together, you want to do some good action to advocate, to do things. You said, we're going to start here. No, you have to start from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your wali, to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your protector, Allah made it to be based on two items, al-ittiba' wal iman Al-Iman is the faith, al-ittiba' is the following of the steps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who conveyed for us the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, as a believer, we have the certainty that your action that you do, intended with it good, only bring result if it's fulfilled based on the ittiba' on the following of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us to do this way through his Prophet sallallahu to help us achieve the barakah, the blessing, the rahmah, the fadl, and all of it, and to be protected and be safe and secure. Therefore, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah to be your wali, and Allah already gave you the news that he's, he's, he's your wali, insha'Allah ta'ala, this is where the center that every believer needs to protect, Every believer need to safeguard, every believer need to defend. And it is the core. When we place ourselves out of this center, we start to go astray. We have weakened our deen. We'll distance ourselves from Allah. Allah said, I am your wali, and we are taking steps away from Allah. We say, I am here. You want Allah to come to you, to your system? No, you come to system of Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower you with his mercy. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this wilaya. As you read in Surah Al-Kahf, قَالَ هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَيَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ After the man who has the two gardens and they've been all ruined, what he was doing, he was like turning aside his hand in regret. He said, I wish I didn't associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was his shirk? What was his action? He's actually had that trust within himself. He had that excessive self-esteem that he controlled everything around him because he was arrogant. That was the shirk that he had. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال, هناك الولاية لله الحق The only one who give you walay, the protection, the only one who can help you is Allah. And the scholar, they said of the tafsir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الحق, the truth, the walay of the truth. Because any other walaya, any other guardian, any other protector is a false, is a falsehood. It does not exist. It does not exist. Why? Because the only protector is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very important for us as a believer, as a community, to review and remind ourselves. Because today, subhanAllah, many people, they are calling for the way of the deen. They are advocating for the Muslims. But you say to yourself, I need to reflect. I need to review my path. I want my path to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not with people that they are or with any other system. You're going to be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to ask you about your deen. He's not going to ask you about things of the dunya, how much you made and what degrees you get. And this is, as a believer, we are obligated to protect the score of the deen. Whatever you find yourself, you have to go back to the center. What is the center? Allah. What is the center is your relation with Allah, that Allah is your wali. It's truly Allah is your wali. What have you done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be your protector? That from where you start. And to implement it, you have to implement the complete, the perfect ittiba. And the perfect ittiba only comes with the understanding of the text of the revelation and the understanding of the implementation of the text of the revelation. And totally different things. It's totally different thing to read the Quran and totally different thing to understand how to implement the Quran. That's why those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them to serve the ummah as people of knowledge who really dedicate their time. They are in the ummah to guide. When we try to cancel all these people who are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them in the ummah are subhanallah the vehicle and the clarification of the path of the guidance and people that are acting away from from the center 
I'll give you two examples, all of you you know. Because protecting the core of your deen is protecting your life. And it is obligatory, and it is seen, and it is defended in every system. The system that they don't even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see them protecting the core of their deen, the core of their aqeedah. And they'll give you very examples that all of you know. One of the European country, one of the protagonists and the foremost into the, uh, in the, you know, having the freedom as something sacred. And they, of course, they follow the secular system. I'm talking about France. They be in heaven, subhanAllah, a whole battle against the hijab. It's forbidden to wear the hijab. They had it years ago. And even people to enter, subhanAllah, to the beach with the hijab, they stop them. It is forbidden to have the hijab in a public place or to get to school and so on. Are not these people, subhanAllah, glorify, venerate, and respect the human rights? You're going to say yes. They have a freedom sacred for them. So why when it came to the hijab, it becomes like some, it's a problem? You have to understand they are defending the core of their system, the core of their creed. For them, the hijab means religion. Introducing a religion in a public space under the governance of the state, which is mean they are conflicting with the very basic of their system, which is the separation between the religion and the, and the government, and the state. So you see, subhanAllah, people who do not believe in Allah, but how they put all their effort, all their power to defend their system. To defend. And people, they see it does not make sense. These people, they grow up, they born there. How can you tell them to not wear the hijab? It's not their right. You say, yes, it is right for everything except this one. Why? Because this is conflict with my inner core of my creed. Just in giving you an example to show you how serious and the gravity of the matter that how we need really at these people, they're defending the core by going, subhanAllah, beyond the, what people think as makes sense to defend their core. You as a believer, what have you done to defend it? Here in the U.S., the conservative, you know, their opinion about, you know, uh, the, the weapon or the arms, firearms. And you see people taking arms with mental illness, going killing kids, killing, you know, in places, movie theater, in schools. And they say, are these people not seeing such a thing? If you try to explain it, you're going to find these people, they are defending the core of their creed. Their freedom, which is sacred. They will not give up the tiny bit of their freedom because it's the core of their creed despite the fact that the whole population here will die. Why? Because they say, if I'll give you some, in the future you're going to cancel it. And I will not give up my freedom. It is sacred for me. It's my belief. Dear brother, respect and sister, just two examples that all of you know. But did you know why they're doing that? Because of their creed. This is how the Muslim, as a believer, you have to defend your creed. Because it's your life. Because it defines who you are. Now, when we see subhanAllah in, in many communities, in the Muslim communities, how people, they behave. They place themselves out of the center. And the problem today, by the way, when people, they say, all oh, the Muslim are divided, that's should not be something that be strange. That is our reality. People that are so hurt in Ramadan and Al-Eid because we have different Eids, and you say people are divided and they get hurt. Say, subhanAllah, actually, that's not when we are divided. That's just a reflection and a sign for Allah to remind us how divided we are. But is anyone asked why we are divided? That's the most important question. To be divided is a reality. It's our, our reality. We cannot ignore such a thing. And it's a natural thing. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell you to come to the jama'ah, to the unity, when we are far of the center of the core of the deen. It's impossible to happen. It's impossible. Why we are far from the center? Far from establishing the walaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people, they come and they position themselves away from the center of the deen and they say everybody needs to be united with us. And this is, is the problem. Because when you ask people to be united with you and you say we are the Muslim, you have to ask a question. He said, how can you say we are the Muslim? You na- you're talking in the name of the Islam and Muslims. When you are not in the center, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, inna awla nasi bi Ibrahim, those who are the best to claim Ibrahim alayhi salam, they need to be in the center of defending the deen, defending the walaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minat ba'dhum awliya'u ba'dh. The believer man and the believer woman, they are awliya, guardians, protector of each other. What they do? They enjoy good, they forbid evil, they establish prayer, they pay zakat, and they believe or they... Obey Allah and His Messenger. So in the obedience of Allah and His Messenger, you have to perfect, you are perfecting the way of following the Prophet ﷺ. But when people, they come out of the center and they stand and they make that position is the center. What's happening? We are increasing and aggravating the division. Why? Because people in this position, they're going to say, oh, you're not with us. You are the one who are dividing the Muslim. Say, how can... Our people be dividing the Muslim when you position yourself far from the center of the core of the deen. That's why when people said, yeah, he come talk and reflect and ponder, and this is the book of Allah between us. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu between us. So actually the action that many people are doing are causing the division when people they say no we are we have people subhanallah they are not joining us people are shortcoming Muslim they don't care. طيب. And this is very important for all of us because if you do not review the core of our deen we will lose the whole deen. Like these people defending or ha- subhanallah having a whole campaign against the hijab to defend their core of the deen. Find the conservative, they have the whole campaign and stop in any law that will change, you know, anything concerning the property that they have of the firearms. Why? Because it's their core deen. You Muslim, these laws are being done by man. Your deen is being revealed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is he? Where is our heart to look how sacred is this deen if you are not willing to defend it? When he there is this story that many of you may be heard about. First, we have a group of Muslims, they took the position to embrace the ultra-liberalism. It's a fact. Tayyip, subhanAllah, how can we uh, defend the action or this position? Is this helping the believer to hold firm on the center of their deen? How come a group of Muslims, they choose this fact and they tell you, come to be with us. They say, when, subhanAllah, it, it, it's very, I would not say hurtful, but it, it's very questionable when you say, we Muslim, we have to do this. You know, it has big question. You say, when you say we, are you the one who been entrusted the deen to protect like awla, like Ibrahim, alayhi salam, like the prophet, like the tabi'een, like the sahaba? You are holding on this core of the deen, begging people to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a question. And you say, we have two. When you say you have two, you make it as obligation. Do you have evidence from the book of Allah? Or are you regarding this maslaha, this interest that you presented to the ummah as something that is in the book of Allah that is going to help us to get to the, to, the, to the pleasure of Allah? Are you not putting your hand in a hand in people who truly do not believe in the akhlaq that you regard at the highest level, at the highest morality, and it is the core of your deen. I'll be in sand, the Prophet ﷺ, to complete, to perfect the good moral. So what moral are you talking about when you put yourself in one side? One of the known da'iyah here in the U.S., he joined the conservative part. 
just because subhanallah everybody stood it's like he they made almost they made him careful wallahi subhanallah it was shocking how can you take a position out of the center of the deen and you make it the center and you look your brother who's known respected da'i that he joined the other party and he joined the other party actually for reason to enjoy good and forbid evil because personally i would not judge anybody but i want to hear when i heard this this uh, scholar that i truly respect i said this he has really justified so how we made ourselves to be liberal and everyone else becomes a kafir well like we have to reflect this is a very serious matter very serious matter is the muslim i united because of be, being scared by the islamophobia if this is the prophet taught us for the muslim to be united to be one voice so we fight the islamophobia did the prophet did this in mecca you see people are following without reflecting without thinking without looking back to their deen looking back to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them Did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you in the Quran you're going to be tested by hearing a lot of hurtful things by being hurt but Allah what he said he said if you be patient and you have piety Allah will defend you for this is a matter that is very important for us if we do not at least make like what the other system are making to protect their creed you muslim you do not protect the core of your creed you're going to be lost no one has the right to take a position and make it the center of the deen and then he made it like the criteria of judging other people categorizing other people that's haram we saying to anyone who want to be active in any field that his 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 own decision but do not make islam to be the voice for what you have making as distortion in the deen if you going to act do not act as a muslim act, act as an american citizen that's your right that's your civil right you have a lot of things so you can have everyone want to want to be conservative that's his choice but if he's conservative does not become a kafir and if he's liberal does not become a kafir he will be accountable of the action that he had done al imam al hasan al basri man known by his humility and his knowledge and modesty a man had an issue with an argument with one of his brother he came to him he said where are the muslims where are the muslims so al imam hasan al basri answer him an amazing answer he said the muslim are in the graveyard the islam is in the quran and the sunnah no one of us can guarantee that he gonna die a believer there truly what al hasan al basri said is the most sound thing that really need to shake your heart you don't know if you're going to die as a muslim or not so those who allah bestow on them the gift to die as a muslim that the muslim so where are the true muslim are in the graveyard That's why we have a question today it's like who is the muslim then is is truly is we have to ask this question because people say our community muslim or muslim said hold on who is the muslim is the muslim because you have the name of islam or you have a name that reflect that you are a muslim how many people from our community how many people they attend the jumuah in normal situation one of the statistic was made is like less than 3% from the whole community those you see part of them in the eid so who is the muslim is not a question to but we say who is the muslim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be his wali to have rahma upon him and to have insha allah baraka for the action that he's doing who is the muslim so you see when we say we muslim he said you have first to define check yourself first are you from from those who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going put baraka in his action if he say insha allah i want to i said then come to the center protect the core what is my core is the wilaya of allah how can i do that strengthen your faith and and perfect the ittiba the ittiba which is the heart 
قال إن أولى الناس بيبقى الذين those who are on the path of his sharia, the path of his thought, the path of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 22 simple characteristics that we want to be the true believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you insha'Allah a beacon of light. You have the gift of the Quran and the gift of the sunnah. Wallahi, people outside, they are in need. But us copying the action and bring it to our community to divide it furthermore, that is the wrong way of the deen. You have the way of the true justice to help people see it. You have the way of the meaning of the true freedom that you have to people to see it. But you only can see it when you're really being soaked by the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala calling you. He said, اِعْتَصِمُوا first بِاللَّهِ second بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold fast to Allah. The second, hold fast to the rope of Allah. What is the difference between them? Allah wants you to hold fast to Him. Allah wants you to establish a connection with Him Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Connection of reliance, connection of trust, connection of confidence, connection of love, connection of being near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where we start. Allah, a while ago, I was one with our shuyukh, he was mentioning, he said, I've been traveling in Europe and someone was in the big day, yeah? he told him, oh, there's this ayah in the Quran, I want to show it to you. He said, okay, show it. He said, I was shocked that he could not even find the ayah after five minutes. And he's looking. He said, subhanAllah, so this person who does not have any relation with the book of Allah, and he's been putting himself or herself in the center of the deen, how can we help each other? How can we help each other to elevate ourselves and elevate our people with the way of the deen? I'tasimu billah is your relation with Allah. I'tasimu bihablillah, hold fast to the rope of Allah, is the guidance in the Qur'an and the Sunnah to help you strengthen the connection between you and Allah. Then you realize that you have to be pleased on Allah for Allah to be pleased with you. Pleased on Allah. How pleased on Allah? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have you to go through trial. And you said, Alhamdulillah. Ya Allah, help me. You are pleased with what Allah gave you. You are in the center of the deen. You are preserving the core of the deen. You have Allah is your wali. Then Allah will protect you, give you dignity, give you might, give you protection. And this how, as a believer, if you come together to really find the true unity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, it only comes through Allah and through the i'tisam bihablillah, holding fast to Allah and then to have fulfilled such a thing such a great effort, such a great striving, you have to hold fast to the rope of Allah, which is the book of Allah, and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu which require two things, as I have said, the understanding of the text, and the understanding of the implementation of the text. And that is what will give you barakah, that is what will bring you blessing, that is what will help you to achieve the change, in the way of Allah, I say this and I pray for you and forgive Dear brother, respected sister, these are reminders for all of us. We've been away from the deen of Allah. And the problem that we feel that we are, alhamdulillah, together, and it is, we are together. But by reminding ourselves, by digging in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by preserving the core of our deen, that's how Allah will help us to have a successful journey. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, she made an ishtihad in the time after the killing of Uthman. When they told her, Ya Aisha, what did you leave your house? What did, why did you do that? Qalat, I heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, La khayra fi kathirin min najwaahum illa man amara bi sadaqatin aw ma'roofin aw islahim bayna al-nas. Wa man yaf'al dhalika batigha amaradatillahi fa sawfa nu'tihi ajran azim. She said, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said there is nothing good in their uh, talk and in their dealing except if someone enjoy good, forbid evil, and make peace between people. And whoever does such a thing in the sake of Allah, Allah will give him a great reward. She read the Quran, she made an ishtihad, but her ishtihad lacks the vision of what the ummah is going through. Muawiyah made an ishtihad. He was claiming the blood of Uthman because he is his relative. And he has the ishtihad, the proof and the evidence. We're not talking about shaky and stretch and loose evidence. Talking evidence from the book of Allah. وَمَنْ قُتِلَ مَظْلُومًا فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيهِ سُلْطَانًا فَلَا يُسْرَفِ الْقَتْلِ Whoever will be killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this power, this sovereignty to, for his relative to claim his blood. So that's what he asked Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. But Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he had the deep knowledge. He had the vision. He had that protection of the core of the deen. That's why the unanimous, subhanallah, opinion of the whole scholar, that Ali was right. He was right. So you see, it's not just to read the Qur'an to implement it. said, let's do a statement, let's do this. He said, hold on, you have to reflect. You want to build your action according to the way of Allah. Look, who can be among us better than Ummul Mu'minin Aisha? Or like better than Muawiyah? Ummul Mu'minin wa Adrak, one of the greatest scholars among the companion. But you see, it requires reflection. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقْ That's after this ayah. قَالَ النَّبِيَّ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And you follow other than the path of the believer. Ask anyone, ask yourself what is the path of the believers. It's in Surah An-Nisa. And whoever follow other than the path of the believer, Allah will let him, leave him alone. And then if he died and fully misleaded and uh, subhanallah, in error, he's going to be cast in hellfire. What is the path of the believers that Allah ordering you to follow? As Al Imam Shafi extracted from this ayah to be the dalil of Al Ijma', the consensus as being one of the source of the ahkam of the Sharia is in this ayah as Al Imam Shafi has made the instant bar. What is the path of the believers? Is the path for someone who stands and he tell, this is the da'wah, this is what we need to do? No. The one humble, modest, striving to protect and to safeguard the core of the deen, which is to be hold to fast to Allah and hold fast to the rope of Allah. That is Sabil al Mu'mineen. And those, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our heart, to be together in holding fast to Allah in holding fast to the rope of Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you a beacon of light to help others be guided and to strive for the right way of justice, the right way of the racial equity and the right way will bring truly the change and healthy change. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us firmness on the path, forgive our, 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 all our sins. Allahumma ghfil lana dhunubana ajma'ina bi rahmatika arham rahimin Allahumma atina fi dunya hasanah وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا ولا تفرق بيننا يا أرحم الراحمين اجعلنا من عبادك المتقين اجعلنا من الذين يعتصمون بك وبحبلك يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر